Good morning. Today we're going to talk to Mr. Jeff Kovish at his home in Lancashire. Jeff is one of the country's top all-round championship show judges and also top professional handler. <laughs> so, so, Jeff, seeing as the programme's called, let's talk lots of episodes. Right. Before we start talking about you, which I want to talk to in depth about your room, can we just talk about Lazar Apsos? Yeah. Can we just talk about one in particular, which everyone wants to know about? Champion Saxon Springs Fresno. Fresno. Yeah. Fresno. Well, how did it? How did all that begin? And well, I, I have to say that that hadn't ever ever seen Fresno really when Jean had her. Not really. Um, and then I think it was one black pool. We were she, we were just chatting, and she was telling me how difficult she was, and and I just happened to say, well, uh, you know, I don't know if if I can I can help or not, and if if I can, just just let me know. Um, and I'm not sure at what point um, she said, you know, she asked me to have her. I, I can't remember that bit, but obviously she did, and um, and she came back, and uh, we were we were. Um, I was with Angela then, and we were in a very small house. Um, and she just came in the house, like like with the other dogs. And she was just so easy. And I couldn't quite understand why Jean. And I've thought about it a lot. And I think, I think knowing Fresno, obviously the way I did, she lived with me for a long time. Jean was a, a we used to be a schoolmistress, and I think she had a bit of a schoolmistress attitude towards her, which I don't think Fresno particularly liked. She, she you know, I mean, Apsos can be awkward devils, we all know that. Yeah. Um, yeah. But she, I don't think she liked the sternness that Jean had. I mean, Jean was never never cruel to dogs or anything like that. I'm not, not going to no, say that. No, but she possible. always had that schoolmistress air. Yeah, it, she? yeah it was, she was strict and, um, you know, um, and you know, you know what Apsos like, you can say, you know, you will do this, and they'll say, oh, no, I'm not. No, you I'm know, not, think, yeah. I think that the way, um, the way, because people say to me, "What was the secret?" Well, there, was, there isn't, there wasn't one. Not as, oh, not I, really. I, 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 mean, I think there was. I think there was. I, think there was. I remember Jean showing first not, and I think it was Blackpool. She took him in the ring, and as soon as she said to her, "Come on," tail went down, uh, shoulders went in, and and she just wouldn't cooperate. And as you say. I think as soon as you got her, the relationship between you and Fresno was just amazing. She just loved you. And I loved her. I mean, she was just... Uh, and I'd, I had no experience of Lars's up until that point. I mean, I'd, I'd obviously seen him in the ring. I'd seen um, Alexander and all those dogs, you know, and, and Intrepid, obviously. Um, I didn't really had, know... Had what... you not handled the gene before, Fresno? No. Oh, I don't know. I don't think so. No, no. Um, so I didn't really know what they were like. And and um, she came. She came in the house, and that was it. And we, we, I knew about coats because um, um, with Angela we had poodles, so I knew knew how to deal with coats. Whereas obviously before that it was all terriers, and it was quite a different different world altogether. Um, and uh, she, she just came in the house, and you know, we just gelled. I mean, she was. She was she was just so nice to live with. It's very hard to explain. She was she was very sweet. Um, yeah, you know, she could be a bit standoffish with people because that you know that's the breed and that's the way she was and the way the breed is. Um, um, and we just gelled. I mean, we went out for walks and and she was never an ounce of trouble in her whole life. She never was an ounce of trouble. How and I remember was the first... she, how old she was when she came to live with you? Do you remember? Um, Oh, crikey. I suppose she'd be two-ish, I would think. Um, but she'd, she'd, she'd been to a few. I mean, obviously, I think at that point, she must have had a couple of tickets. I don't know if she was made up or not. I mean, obviously... No, I don't, I don't think she was. No. I think Paul obviously gave her the first ticket at Crufts, and then she went second in the group under Percy Witcher, I think it was. Um, as I say, I don't... I, don't, I, don't, you know, I honestly don't know that, the answer to that question. Anyway... Um, I remember the f first time I took her out, 
um, it was under Ken Warrington at the old Leicester show, I think it was. And I was, I was very nervous because, you know, this bitch had this reputation of being naughty. And I thought, that's all I need now is for me to go in the ring. And, you know, she makes a, a complete fool out of me. Well, she just didn't. And she never, ever did. From the day I had her, she never, ever dropped a tail. And she never once didn't give her her best for me. Um, it was just, she was just a dream come true for me. Um, um, yeah, I mean, she was just a wonderful bitch. And, and um, I've, just, I've just actually watched um, um, a thing done with uh, Radek in, in Slovakia with Jean, Joan Kendall. And yes. she mentions Fresno, and and it's nice to hear what she because you know you, you have your own impressions of your own dogs, and I mean I just thought she was absolutely perfect. I mean I went over like a fine tooth comb. I could never find anything that I really wanted to change about her, and I thought, well, yeah, maybe you're looking at her through rose coloured spectacles. But when 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 you know the great John Kendall says things like that about her, then then obviously um, they try. I mean she she was just easy. She, she was just easy. She just never, never caused me any problems. I think probably as well, it was a good combination between Fresno and you handling and present, present, presenting her. Well, she was always immaculate. Yeah. Well, well. To be fair, she had a, she had she had a really good coat. She had a really typical um, Laza coat. You know, none, none of these big woolly things. You know, it was a real hard, hard coat. You know, and it was always straight and. Um, it, it was an easy coat, but but my way of of handling anything has never been rough, rough, rough. And you know you will do it. No, um, no. That's not that's not been my way ever, and that obviously suited Fresno because um, she responded to it. You know, um, and that was as simple as that. So she ended up the breed record or the CCs, which currently she still is. Yeah. How many did she get altogether? 47. 47 cc's. And in those days, there were because oh, numbers, oh, yes. numbers were much bigger than when they are now. And, and you, had, you had significant people in the breed too. You know, um, all those old great breeders were still around them. So it was, you know, it's, 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 it's hard to explain to people nowadays what it was like then. Um, it was tough, you know, and, and they were good breeders, you know, they bred good stuff. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't that they were just around. I mean, lots of them, you know, June Frankel, Sue Ellis. Uh, um, Tina Lewis. The, the list just goes on. Yeah, it, yeah. It goes on, it goes on forever, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they, they were clever, they were clever breeders as well in those days. They knew yeah. exactly what they were yeah. doing. Yeah. And they knew exactly yeah. what they wanted to produce. So the, the breed, the breed was strong then. It, you know, I'm afraid it's not strong now, but it was, it was very strong then. Um, so for her to win that number of tickets, you know, yeah, yeah. So did she stay with you then all the time after that? Yes, all the time. Yeah. Did you end up owning her? Did you own her? Yes, yes, Jean. So well, well. To be fair, Jean gave 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 her to me um but the condition was she had she had the whole of the litter back which was the f litter um folderol um famous flyer oh, yeah. flare um, fol um fun and games um it was a f fabulous litter and i was i was i was thinking about it well i'm thinking about doing this interview about about that litter and it was when we were in the old house and it was a, a small terrace cottage we lived in and um, she was mated to Hackensack. And uh, I remember this night she started to whelp and we had her in front of the fire. And I have to say that these puppies were coming like sausages. It was like one after another. After another. No, you can get, it was like, you can get like, that, can't you? Yeah. Angela, <laughs> Angela, try this one quick. There's another one coming. There's another one coming. There's another one coming. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, I, I, it was absolutely incredible. You know, How many was in that litter then? Hmm? How many were in the litter? Eight. 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 Well, yeah. Yeah, she yeah. wanted to get rid of them, didn't she? There were that many. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like, you know, you see these people making sausages. It was yeah. like that when you you got... one after another. <laughs> <laughs> so did you not keep anything yourself? 
from the cloud. No, no she you, had to have them all. Yeah, yeah, she, so, she took them all. So did you meet her again yourself later? I just did. Um, I met her. Um, I met her. I mean, the litter by Hank was 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 um, a brilliant litter, but but I wanted to try something different. Um, Fresi's mum, um, um, Hardacre Not So Dusty, was a grey bitch yeah. with a lot of lots of good old English breeding in it, and I I just thought I'd like to try something different. So I used a dog called Swift Eagle. Um, I used him, and then and then that was that was the Saxon Spring one as well, wasn't it? Yes, yes. Uh, I've got the breeding somewhere. Um, and then uh, the next letter, I used Tina Lucy's Do What, which is quite funny really because Do What was by Swift Eagle out of out of one of Tina's, and and Jean Jean for some reason Jean hated this dog, even though it's by Swift Eagle, and she she would only refer to him as that dog. That dog. Oh, you've used that dog. Have that you? dog. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you can hear him saying it. Yeah, I can hear him saying that now. I can, <laughs> I can hear him saying it now. I remember she once saying that, do you remember Ecclesiastic? With yeah. Ken, the black yeah. and white one that Ken yeah. had kept. Yeah. She didn't like that one either. <laughs> <laughs> and that was another, that dog. It was a being left to her. It was a being left to Jean. She wouldn't have kept Ecclesiastic at all. But, oh, dear. But yeah. that's that's the schoolmistress in her, isn't it? Yeah. Marvelous person. I mean, she was she was she was very nice and she was very kind and and such knowledge. I mean, uh, I mean, often I would I would we would go places um, like we went down to Falls, our pictures taken of Hank and and Fresie, and uh, we drove down together. And you know, it, it was it was so much so much knowledge that you know you could just take it all in you know it was just i wish I, I wish in those days i had a recorder and i could have recorded it all because it was quite amazing you know um because she was she was a damn good breeder you know and it was incredible that she came from bassett's which you know no comparison and 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 yet and yet she didn't do the the, the breeding in bassett's such so I, I often wonder quite how that works um i mean, I mean she, she i think she did okay in bassets but like obviously in larges i mean she's world famous for forever you know and and i don't quite know how how she worked that how how, how it came into her head with that because so, she just she just knew you know what was best and what wasn't sometimes things do just gel don't they they do just work you don't yeah, know why yeah, why yeah. they have but yeah don't. yeah yeah i think i think she had a lot of Support with Ken. Yeah, yeah, but I don't know. I don't know whether whether how much influence Joan Kendall would have, really, um, or, or Anne Matthews in those days. I don't know. But Jean was was kind of a, a bit of a singular person, really. She you know she did her own thing. Yeah, yeah uh, I was just I was just thinking that she would. From what I've met of them when I've spoke to her in the years gone by, she would listen to what people would say and not always take a lot of notice of it. She did what she wanted. She yeah, knew yeah. she knew what would work and it did. Yeah. It yeah. it just yeah. worked, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, but I often I often sort of think think now, like like talking about Jean and people um going back how they 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 um knew how to breed i mean with no back i mean jean didn't have a, a doggy background and like a lot of people don't have but yeah they, they, they just when it came to breeding they just knew what to do why why does that not happen so much today as it did then how does I, i've often thought how did we have the knowledge then and yet people don't have the knowledge now I personally, and this is just my personal opinion, I think in the days gone by, which make, it makes us sound like we're 900 years old, we bred, we bred for the type and the quality and the dog. We always took the, the breed into consideration. Unfortunately, I think a lot of them today just breed to win. Breed to yeah. win, breed to show. Yeah. Yeah. They, don't, yeah. they don't study pedigrees. They, don't, they just put this dog to that dog because that dog's winning 
been left to you was that uh, and, and look at it in a totally different way. We just wanted to improve the breed and carry on, move the breed forward. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Not yeah. I don't yeah. think they're idiots. Yeah. I think you're right. I don't think people uh, are interested in um, what's behind what they have. Um, they, they never seem to ask any questions about, you know, well, what was this dog like, you know, and all the rest of it. They, they, they never ask those sort of questions. And um, it's kind of odd, really, that, that, again, going back, we had the interest to do that, but they haven't got the interest now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But it, it, it's obviously, yeah, they, they just want to win because to be honest with you referring to Lars's I've, I've heard people say about whatever they've got um oh well um, um I bred this litter uh, was anything good in the litter no not really but I'll keep I'll keep a bitch to breed on from and I want to get a hold of them and shake them and say for goodness sake why you know you breed from the best you can for goodness sake breed from the best you can not not because you've you've got something I mean poor quality will breed poor quality yeah you need to put good quality to good quality. Yeah, and I'm, um, this is a this is a sort of dangerous area I'm getting into now. But anyway, it's going to have to be said. Um, at the, at the moment in time in the breed, I think we, we are you know not in a good position, and and the problem is that we don't have the number of of, of stud dogs available that perhaps we had going back to Fresno days. Um, so. The danger is that people um, can, could, because the gene pool is so small and the number of stud dogs available is, is quite small, and, and, and people, of course, are, are very colour minded. You know, if it's grey and white, black and white, oh no, we don't want anything to do with that. Oh, um, tell me, tell me you know, about it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Um, they'll just use a gold dog because that's it. No matter whether, whether, you know, this black and white dog over here is better bred, it's better balanced. No, no, it's got to be gold, it's got to be gold, it's got to be gold. Um, so if you if you if you if you use just one dog, the problem then is that that the progeny from that dog, where are you going to take it to? I know, I know, I know. It's something that I thought about this. I think, well, I know, I know. The, the gene pool at the moment is smaller than it was. Yeah. Years ago, it, it, it seemed to get really wide. And we got loads of different lines to choose from and quality dogs. But we haven't got them no more. And the, got them gene pool, the gene pool is like shrunk again. Yeah. I don't, and as you say, what you're saying, what are people going to go to? I don't think, I don't think they think the next generation. No, they don't. They don't think, well, I'm going to breed, breed these two together and then what I get here, if it's good enough, I'll take it to that one because that one's related to that one and I can bring this line into that. You know, the, 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 that doesn't come into their heads at all. Um, no, as I was I, saying earlier on in the week, when I breed a litter, I don't just look for a puppy in that litter. I look for where I can go with the puppy out of that litter next mm, time. Mm, 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 yeah. No, I'm not, am I going to win with this? That's what, how I'm going to develop. I'll, that's that's a good word. We used to talk about building a line. That's right. Yeah, and I don't think anybody does now. You never you never hear that uh, that being used no, anywhere. No, no. no I've just I've just thought about that. We used to say constantly we're trying to build a line, but they don't yeah. now because they go everywhere, don't they? They just ricoch they ricochet off everywhere, everywhere. And of course, the the danger is that that they're they're, they're easily influenced by people. Um, you know, uh, they, they don't they don't ask enough people's advice about what they should do. It's like one person, and that person's going to tell them. That person might not be correct with what they're saying. They might even be a good breeder themselves. But oh yes, I'll go and use that dog. Why? Well, it's winning everything. That's not that's not always the the best reason to use it. Well, you know, I'm, you know, it's not always the best reason to to use a dog. Um, no, it's not. You know, and 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 forget forget coat color. People are, are too bothered by coat color. Um, you know, Fresno, um, um, I bred her to, what the hell did I breed her to? Well, anyway, it was, Mr. it was Mr. Mulligan's litter. Well, after Mr. Mulligan's litter came, uh, Mr. Mulligan obviously was gold. I got a party colour, gold and white, and I had a black and tan. Um, 
and the black and tan was very nice. And a well-known person who's still around now um, asked about, and I said, I got a black and tan. Oh, no, I couldn't have one of those. Oh, no, I'm not having one of those. This was a nice dog. I mean, he eventually went as a pet because I couldn't give them all. No, they wanted because yeah. he was black and They wanted gold, 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 gold. Um, the one thing that surprises me is we haven't lost more pigment than we have with this gold to gold to gold, you know. Um, and, and well, so I think we do have some winter noses and... and and I do think I do think some of them get touched up a bit. Oh well, yeah, I can believe it. Yeah, but but you're only kidding yourself. You know, if you start doing stuff like that, you're just kidding yourself. All right, you might you might win. Would but you want you that? Gonna... Would you want that in your line? No, because it, once it's in, it's in. Yeah. You know, it's like a bad mouth. Once it's there, you you and it's, it's sod's law. I can use that expression without getting. Um, you'll breed something stunning. It's have a bad mouth. So you're just kidding yourself all along the all along the way, you know. Um, and as uh, you say, I do I do think the newer people in the breed. I'm not saying I'm not I'm not generalising about everybody. But I think they do listen sometimes to the wrong people, or they don't talk to enough people. People. Yeah, I think they're, they're, they're like sheep. A lot of them. They're, it's like you know. They, they just follow one person and 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 are just directed by that one person, um, and I think we have to try and, and I don't think we ever will get get, get away from this colour thing. Um, you know, it's like, it's like they say, you know, a good horse is never a bad colour, um, no. and it's the same, it's the same in, in episodes. You know, um, and it's a shame because you know there are some some nice colours out there, but they they they, they get forgotten about. Yes, unfortunately, some of the nice, some of the nicer dogs have been on the grey and white and the black do get forgotten about. Yeah, people yeah. do overlook them in a litter. Mm. Mm. I'm, I'm always drawn to them, but lots of people just overlook them into a litter. Yeah, yeah. Can we just go back to first now? Yeah. So she remained with you for the rest of her life. She did. Yeah. How yeah. How did she live to be? Seventeen. Good age. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and she was a lady. Oh. I, I can tell where you talk about her. You're still emotional about her, aren't you? Aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> That's lovely, Jeff. That is lo lovely to see you, that. Right. Shall we talk <laughs> about you, Mr. College? Oh, me. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I've only got 200 questions. <laughs> <laughs> what would you like to know? Everything. Oh you can God. tell me anything. You see, it's all safe with oh. me. <laughs> right. At what age did you get your first dog? No, but it's a okay. show dog. Well, um, I was 18. I always wanted a dog, and uh, I wanted, for some reason, I wanted a wire fox terrier. I must have my, parents, I my parents used to be wire fox terriers. Oh, Beautiful, but, I love them. But my mum and dad, for some reason, wouldn't let me have one. Um, but I could but have one. They, they obviously didn't like you enough. <laughs> <laughs> I could well be true. Perhaps I was going to have a dog's child. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was punishment. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So we ended up with. Well, I ended up with a Westie, and uh, um, I don't know what, what, who, who said something to me about, oh, you should show it. You know, I knew nothing about showing. Didn't know anything about dog shows. And when I lived in in uh, West Lancashire, there there was a local show, and I went along with this dog and. I mean, God, when I look back now, I mean, I think, oh, my God, you know, they must have thought can I was you, a video. Can you cringe? I cringe, absolutely cringe. I cringe big time. It gets even worse. <laughs> and I kept going, this, this dog. And I enjoy it. I, I love the shows. And I, I kept going and I kept getting sort of last in the class. From what I mean. And I, I was a green one. I knew nothing about it and until somebody said, you know why you're not winning with that dog? And I said, well, no, why? He said, because it's got a bad mouth. It had an undershot mouth. Well, I didn't know. And it was that time there was another, an old couple in, in, in the Southwest area who took me under their wing and, and they were very nice to me. And um, they eventually gave me a bitch um, 
which was read by the famous Miss Cook, um, and and uh, the, 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 you know they said well, you can have a, when you show it if you have a litter just give us a puppy back. Well, it was a great start for me, and, and uh, well, it went on from there really. Um, I bred my first champion out of that bitch, and um, uh, again, I mean, nobody really helped me trimming wise. I don't know. I don't know how I did it. I've, I've thought about it many times. I've no idea how I did it. I must have read books or something. Um, because that, that can be an art form. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I mean, um, and, the, and the bitch, she was called Selena. Um, I trimmed it myself. Um, I mean, the, the presentation, I have to say, was, was different than it is now. It's, it's not quite the style of Marie Burns, you know. But this I was there. I think in those in those days, the terriers, they quite liked them a bit rough and ready. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then, and then, um, where I was living, and again, things happen, and I can't remember how it happened. Um, I must have been going to shows. Um, I used to go to shows on the coaches in those days because I didn't have a car, um, and I was, I was introduced to a man called Fred Sills who lived in Carlisle and he said you know um, if you'd like to um, come to shows and give me a hand getting dogs ready and I'll pick you up on the way down and take you to the shows well it worked perfectly for me so I used to Fabulous. meet him at, uh, on the M6 there, and I'd go down to shows with him um, and I learned how you know, to trim and to handle and all the rest of it so I used to meet lots of interesting people and then my career started from there, and I mean, I, for, many, for many years, Wessies were the only breed I really showed, and um, I, I still hold the record for the, the most um, Wester champions anybody's ever had. I thirty champions, which is um, quite some. So, were you working in those days then? Yeah. Oh yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I worked at a pet shop, funny enough. Um, yeah. Yeah, and I used to do deliveries. I used to do deliveries to kennels and things. And again, I got to know um, different people around about, you know. Um, and you pick up bits. You know, I think if you're, uh, again, we're, we're comparing today's people. I mean, in those days, I was I was mad keen and I would used to read every book I could find, every newspaper, I bought both dog papers, you know, and talk to people and listen to people. And you, and you pick up bits here and there and you learn bits here and there. I mean, even now, you know, I can I can pick up bits of stuff from people, and you know, oh, I've never tried that. I'll, I'll give that a go, and all sorts of things like that. Um, and that's how I, I, I progressed, and then I just just branched out, and it went on from there, really. So, when did you become a professional handler? At what age did that just? Did you go? I'm going to be a professional handler, or did it slowly develop? No, it didn't. It it it. No, it didn't. It started. Well, when I when this this old couple gave me that Westie, it was a fame check, a fame check Westie, um, and and th in those days, well, Miss Cook was a, was a was a amazing woman. She was such a character, but she was very difficult with paperwork. Now this old couple got got this bitch from Miss Cook, but for some reason um, there was paperwork problems. Miss Cook wouldn't sign whatever. I can't remember. So this couple were allowed. To register this bitch in their own, with their own prefix, not Miss Cooks. Well, Cookie must have seen this, and and she then she then approached me and asked me if I would trim some dogs for her, take some dogs and trim them for her. I mean, I, I was young and innocent, and uh, she was eager, a crafty old eager, eager. And, yeah, and eager, and she she was using me to trim the dogs. For her. She yes. went to the clever woman, yeah, clever lady. And I and I I thought afterwards, you know, you are a damn fool. <laughs> you know, you know, she's been using you, but. Anyway, it was a step ladder, and it, it was it was uh, it was good for me. And I handled a few of for her, and then I just got more and more, and, and that was it, really. Um, I was still fairly young, I suppose. Mm, I don't know, ten years after that, maybe. I don't know. So, how many breeds have you actually owned? Um, Westies, Larsers, of course, French Bulldogs. I've had a few Norfolks. So, so when did when did you get your F fixed? Oh, pretty much straight away. Um, and where did that come from? From well, the, 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 my my 
grandparents, my dad, dad's mum and dad, were Welsh. And we used to go, he, he worked on the trains in those days. We used to go down across some holidays into Wales. Uh, and she lived in a little village called Baglan, which was near, near Swansea. So I went to Baglan and I, and, and I couldn't have it. I was, I was intrigued to know why, because it was just a little village. And I thought, why would anybody have it? There was nobody else, else, nobody else had that one. That bad one. Yeah, but why? Anyway, yeah. I couldn't have it. So, something else I had. Home Mountain Ash. Um, there was another place down there. I couldn't have that. I thought, blimey. So I said, Wales, and, and Wales, Celo is Wales backwards with an A. <laughs> 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 and I thought it was something to do. Do with the sea. <laughs> I've always thought these years it was something to do with some sea captain. <laughs> no, I sorry. Thought it, I thought your great grandparents were like the animal so like, of the fleet. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we answer that? I'll make story over for you. It'll be better. <laughs> Another disappointment in life, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> so when you got Wales, then is that when you started judging? Yeah, the first we ever ever did was West, and that was in nineteen eighty four. That was the first set of tickets I gave. Yeah, um, it was just, just it was just in the Terry Group, really, in those days, because that's that's the only place I was known. And then, and then, of course, Andrew and I got married, and we had poodles. So then I branched out into the into the poodle world. And that was a completely different world to um, what I was used to in the Terry world. Because it was, you know, the Terry world was sort of working men and miners and what have you, know, and, uh, you know, and to go to the middle world, which was, I mean, very like, different. Like, sure, like, sure. Yeah. I, I mean, but I mean, um, different in as much as Terry men were very stern and very intense and, one, you know, you know, but the, the poodle people were, Funny and, and outrageous and and, and um, so entertaining, a completely different world. Uh, um, yeah, so that was that was a real eye opener. <laughs> you know, some of the, uh, that was a shock to your system. Oh, some of those old poodle. Oh, the things that you would say and the language that they would use. I was thinking, oh. <laughs> um, so, how many breeds do you give tickets in now? Um, 40, I think it is. Oh, yeah. I don't know. That is amazing. Yeah, it is. And, and without, I haven't, in, in fairness, I haven't, I haven't really gone for a judging career. Um, I mean, I do 40 breeds, yes. Um, and it's a lot of them are breeds that I've been involved with as well. Um, but um, if somebody put a gun to my head and said judging or showing, showing would come first without even having to think about it. You know, I get more of a kick being with the dogs, being with the dogs, than I do judging, you know. Um, whatever you do, judging-wise, you're wrong. Somebody will have a go at you for... And it's nothing to do with that. It's just I don't get the kick out of judging that I do out of, out of showing, you know. Like, like when I had Frezzy, it was... Oh, I used to just love being with her, and, you know, she was so easy and, and nice to be with and no trouble, and, you know, you could take her anywhere and she wouldn't, she wouldn't cause any problems, you know. Take her in a hotel, she'd never, never mess anywhere. You know, she was just... That's, that's more, just, just a lady. Just a lady. I mean, I didn't. I can't take the credit for that. Gene, um, but she really was just, just a little princess. Yeah. Yeah. Did you handle Hackensack? Yes. 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 That I did. Was, yes, that I did. That must have been an amazing day. Amazing day. It, it was. It, it was. It was. It was an amazing day. Um. Um, especially in the group. I mean, the group was judged by Bobby James, and I don't think that, well, there, there weren't TV cameras around then, like there was now. And, and the, the old Olympia um, on the floor, a bit, a bit like Birmingham City, uh, when you, when the carpets are covered, there's that, there's those clanging metal grids. Metal grids underneath. Well, the one there was in the group ring at Crofts, and and I'm taking Hank round, and and I step on one of these grids. And his tail goes down. And I, I can remember saying, thinking, oh my, his tail's gone down. You know, and I said, I said he, you know, he, he heard that noise, you know. And, and he just said to me, okay, just take him up and down again. Well, it took him up and down again. His tail was fine. That was it. But it gave me 
you know, a heart stopping moment. Um, and then, and then um, the best in show judge was a lady called Molly Garish, very famous uh, greyhound whippet lady. I didn't know her at all, and and I can remember, I can remember stands with with Hank, and um, she went over to group captain Sutton. Well, I knew who he was because I'd handled yeah. beagles, yeah. For, and she said something to him, and and I don't know what she said to him, but she just came back. And she just pointed to me. My God, I, I couldn't believe it. Well, Jean was outside the ring. And, ap and apparently the security people wouldn't let her in. And she kept saying, it's my dog, it's my dog, but he can't come in. And apparently <laughs> she leapt the fence. I mean, she wasn't a young woman. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh my God, she could have hurt herself or impaled herself on these, on these, these, these railings, you know, but uh, she was coming up, you know, and gave me a big hug. It there was, was, no, there was, there was no, no stopping her. No. Well, you know, why are we surprised? <laughs> <laughs> fabulous, ex fabulous experience, so experience. fabulous day. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. must be one of your best memories. Oh, it was. Yeah, yeah it was. Because yeah, he, he was a dog that he was one of those dogs that would give you a, a real kick when you showed him. You know, um, just a buzz. You, know, you, felt the, like, you felt like he was in tune with the dog yeah. when he moved. It's, it's, it's hard. It's very hard to put into words, but he was just like, it was exciting, you know, a buzz, and he just went with you every time. And he was another, he had a fabulous coat, Hank. He was a big dog. He wasn't a little dog, he was a biggish dog. No, he was big, he was big for that to them time. Yes, yes, yes. Um, a fabulous coat, and, and he had ever such an easy coat. Um, I mean, I never kept Hank. Um, Jean, he lived with Jean, because Jean adored the dog. Um, and he was, he, was, he was one of those dogs that... I think he would have gone with anybody, to be honest. I think he would. Um, he didn't really. He, he wasn't like he wasn't like a Frezzy, because Frezzy would sometimes look at you, you know, and and, and know what you're saying to her. But he just kind of looked at you, thinking, oh, you know, who are you? You know, let's do it, whatever. Just go. Yeah, a bit like, like just... clock, a bit like clockwork. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he was they're, not, they're nice dogs to have sometimes. Yeah. yeah. And he, as I say, he was arrogant. He was a very, you know, arrogant dog. So he always put on a good show. Um, well, look at me, look at me. Yeah, yeah, look at me. I'm, I'm important, I'm look special. Me, yeah, look at me. Yeah. Which, is, which is, makes it easy, doesn't it? Yeah, well, you know. Makes life easier. And an app so with its nose in the ears, he's, he's arrogant, which is, you know, that's a, it's the same sort of aloofness, isn't it? Well, I think that if the, if the head goes up and the tail comes over, it just brings them all together, doesn't it? Yeah, if yeah, the head yeah. goes down and the tail goes down, yeah. it, goes, it loses its shape yeah. altogether. Yeah, yeah. yeah the poles so yeah, they can pull yeah. the cells together yeah. on the move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's you know, even now, if, if they drop the head and drop the tail, you might as well pick them up and take them out because, yeah. you know, yeah. they're not going to come back. You know, whatever's upset them, if you've upset them or they've just decided I'm not going to do it today, just pick them up and take them out. Yeah. 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 Can we talk about your judging abroad? Yeah. Do you judge much abroad? Uh, well, no, a bit, yeah, but not not lots. Um, again, I don't want to be away every weekend like, they, you know, some of the judges do. That wouldn't that wouldn't appeal to me. Um yeah, I go away on odd occasion and I, I enjoy it. Um, I mean, this year I was I was down to go away twice, I and mean, that's not going to happen now, of course. Um, but yeah, um, maybe maybe once or twice a year, if that. Um, but I've had some 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 nice ones to do, you know, um, in different Which countries. Which has been your best best judging appointment abroad? Oh. Too many, too many. Well, I think I, I should think I would have to say Sydney Royal um, for me to do it, which is is is. <laughs> I mean, I'm not on I'm not on the judging circuit, and, and I'd, I'd heard a lot about the show, but I didn't quite expect it to be what it was going to be like, um, and it was actually twelve days of judging on the go. Um, which was, it was good, um, and excited and going. I was with a Finnish lady, a Finnish judge, who was good fun to be with. So we, we had a good time. 
and um, it, it was it was very exciting and and um, I did I did the breed I did I did Lars's and I did the the group uh, and it's a bit hard on people in Australia because you judge Sydney Royal on one day but you don't do the group that day they go away and they come back on the last day for best in show and groups so if you live in Perth you've got to go all the way over to Perth wait a week or so and then come back for best in show well it's, it's it must be hard going and I gave the group to a, a lovely dog I mean and I, I and I truthfully didn't know who he was um and it turns out how to be one that Jackie Back spread Nathaniel oh yeah yeah um and he was he was lovely he was lovely he became a grand champion out in Australia didn't he yeah yeah um but, but a very nice balance and nice type dog though very very nice and to go back to to Jackie's older stuff, the, like the, the Hatchlet, Hannah Lees and Hannah and all those. She'd used something of mine. I'm not sure if it was Mulligan or who she used. She used one of mine because I think I think Jackie's style suited my style, if, if I can put it like yeah, that. Yeah. Same sort of balance. And um, I was I was actually thrilled when, when I found out who he was because I thought, oh, crikey, this, you know, something of mine is in here. Um, um, yeah, yeah, that that was that was very exciting judging judging there. Did you enjoy Australia? Yes, yes. Um, I didn't see much of it to be honest. Um, it only saw Sydney. Um, I also I also one of the days I'd been invited to judge the French Bulldog Club of Australia, which is the breed I'm, I'm involved with now, and um, they had their own showground. It must have been an hour or so outside of Sydney out somewhere and on this purpose-built showground i think it was called the bill spill study was a famous judge showground and all the all a lot of breed clubs had, had their shows there it was it was an amazing place absolutely amazing is, 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 it, out, is it outside yes yes, yes. I, I, i've judged there i've judged the lads of outside clubs there fabulous yeah. place oh wonderful i mean you know so so far thinking these places you know um you know, why can't we? Why can't we have thoughts like that? You know, I mean, it's like I went to to judge in Kenya a few years ago, and I'm going back again in a couple of years' time. In Little Kenya, have their own showground. Um, it's only small, obviously, but it's it's got their, they've got their own benches. It's a covered covered um, area for the dogs. It's like on a bowling green. It's beautiful, and, and you know. Why can't we have something like that? Or what have we got? A damn place in Northumberland which nobody goes to. Yeah. <laughs> so these probably might be a few difficult questions. I like difficult questions because I don't have to answer them. <laughs> of all the dogs you've ever judged, which is the most amazing one, you've gone over and gone, wow. You're talking about Lars's now? No. Worldwide, anything. <laughs> I would, I would think the one that the, the dog that, that I suppose excited me the most was the dog I gave best in show at Crufts to, which was um, Soul Trader Peekaboo. Um, I could watch, I could watch her all day. She just floated around the ring, beautiful to go over. Um, yeah, she would certainly be uh, at the top of the list. Um, I mean, I mean, I can't take Fresno out of it. I mean, she was just, just, just perfection. Um, yeah, we'll leave it at that. Yeah. What advice would you give people coming into the breed or coming to showing, shall we say, these days? Well. I think the best advice would be, would be if somebody wants to buy something, to buy the best they can. To search, to search. Don't just take the first one. I mean, study, study, study the breed more. Read, you know, read the breed standard obviously first. Look at pictures. Look at look the balance. Um, you know, watch, watch, watch what you what you know what you think is the best. You know, if you're going to buy a bitch, buy the best you can, because then you can, you can, you know, 
a, a good pitch is, is, is really worth its weight in gold. Um, these days, finding them might not be quite so easy. Um, but I think if you search enough, um, um, look at pedigrees, ask questions. Don't just don't just wade in. It's it's like people nowadays. You know, they ring up for a puppy of anything. They've got to have it now. You know, well, I'll have one ready in a couple of weeks. Oh no, it's got to be now. Don't go, don't go that route because you know you could you could buy yourself a, a pile of trouble and you know most most show dogs are pets so they're with you forever. So if you buy something that's that's not not good, then then you're gonna you're gonna go nowhere. That's the best advice I would give. I think I think you're very correct, isn't it? What advice would you give to people? Just coming out and judging, starting to judge. Well, I've, I've made this. I've made this statement many times. Um, judging is easy. You walk in the ring. You judge the dog to the best of your ability, and you walk out again. If you walk in the ring with a baggage. Well, that's Mrs. So and So, and she gave me a ticket a few years ago. And that's Mrs. So and So, and she and she's got the top stud dog. And that's Mrs. So and So. Well, we can't put her down. You're making you you're in a mess, and you'll never forgive me. I agree with you entirely. Judge the dogs. I, I once, I once went. I once. This is some years ago, and it's not large as it, it was in Westies. There was a girl that had a Westie, and she was struggling for a third, third ticket. And I was doing the read. And I thought, oh, poor girl, I'm, I'm going to, there won't be much up there, I'll, I'll give her a third, six, eight. And I went up there, and she walked in the class, and I thought, I can't do this. And I actually put the bitch third in the class. And he taught me a, he taught me a big lesson that, 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 you know, I never go to a show now thinking who I'm going to give it to. And, and I'm a great beaver, for, for me personally, in, in good feeling. If I go, to, if I go and, and I'm judging or whatever break, and I see something, and my gut feeling tells me that's the one, I'm right. Yep, I'm back. Yep. Uh, so it's important, that one. Can I, can I, I just ask you one thing? Yep. Was it, was it something I said? <laughs> <laughs> it's, in your, it's not you, it's me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, Jeff, what dogs in the breed have impressed you either in at the time being or in the past? Uh, well, I wouldn't want to say about, about the time being because that, that would, you know, um, you know, judging wise and what have you. Um, the the first. Lars, that me, of course, was intrepid. Um, he was the first one that caught my eye. I mean, he was so, you know, we'd been used to the sort of Alex and and that, and that sort of style. Um, and this dog, this American dog, came in and he was just like, wow, he was, you know, over the top, I suppose, if you compare him to the older ones, shall we say. Um and he was just so exciting to watch, you know. And I mean, with Gene, he was he was great. Um, and I, I mean, I went over Intrepid, and I, and I liked him. Um, I'm, I'm always I'm always wary of saying things about Lars's. You know, people say to me, you know, oh, have you seen that? Isn't he wonderful? And I'd, I I would say, could be. I said, but you know, I like to go over them first because what you see isn't what you get. Um, I mean. When I gave no, the group, no, if you're very good at presentation, you can make a poor dog. Poor dog. Yes, you can. But but I, and I, I've seen dogs that uh, I've liked and put my hands on them, and, and oh my god, you know, and the fronts are all crooked and, and you know, know. And know. no body, and you know, you know what I'm saying. And yeah. uh, and, and that's some of the things I've heard people say too. Um, 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 what have you got? Oh, his, his front's are good. Oh, yeah, well, I'll grow a coat. It'll hide it. You know, th those are things that you shouldn't be saying. You know, that, that's not what the breed's about. You know, it's not... The, the breed isn't about coat. 
you know, it's, 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 it's a part of it, but it's not the breed, which some people seem to, to think it is, you know, make it look wonderful. That's it. No, it's not. Um, I do um, think I do think some people think coat is the main thing. Yes, absolutely right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Coat and coat and movement. If you've got a good coat and it flies, that's it. And and the the, the danger is that that we we have, you know, judges coming up, breed judges who who don't really know how to go over a dog. You know, you watch them putting the hands on the dog, and you think, well, what are they doing? You know, why are they putting their hands there? That does tell them nothing. Um, and that's dangerous because, you know, we can all make them look wonderful and, and, and you know, and fl fl fly around there. But, again, they shouldn't fly around the ring. And I, I've noticed that's, some... Yeah, I know. Just what you're going to say was one of my next questions, that. Uh, when, you know, take, when the judge says to them these days, would you mind taking them round? It's like, ready, steady, go. Yeah. And they all, they all run around the ring. Well, I mean, I won't have it. I mean, because, you know, it, the, the, the breed stand is specific about movement. Free sure. and jaunty. Free you know, and jaunty. You know, they're, not, they're not American cockers. If you want an American cocker to move, go and buy, buy an American cocker. Don't buy a Laza because that's not how they should. And, and, and the, the judges are at fault here as well for allowing it. You know, I, I, I won't have it in... in not necessarily in Lars, but in other breeds where running isn't acceptable. Um, and you take away the essence of the breed. You know, I've got a model downstairs um, of an Absol, and it's, it's, it's a moving one, and it's just how the breed should be, you know, carrying itself, you know, moving jauntily, not high kickback, um, um, which some seem to think is, is impressive. Well, it might be impressive, but it's not correct. And this applies to a lot of breeds where running isn't acceptable for that breed. Um, you might you might make the dog look impressive, but also you might make the dog's faults more obvious. So you have to be very careful. If you think you're going to impress a judge, you might be t showing him all the dog's faults as well. So uh, they should remember that when they're trying to trying to do this. Um, but I, I, I will never allow um, running in, in Apsos. I'll, I'll, they, can, they can go around the ring and run if they want, but the next time they'll be all made to walk. Mm -hmm. um, that's an acceptable uh, pace. Yeah. Free and it's, a, it's a real, real thing with me, this, this running. It, 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 I get really angry with it. I mean, you get that, you get that like, lift. It's lovely. When, don't, when, you, when you run them... You don't get that, you get... No. Yeah. Yeah. But, and because, of course, the faster you go, also, they have to drop their head to, to move like that because they, 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 they can't move fast with their head up. It's not possible. It's not structurally possible. Um, yeah. Yeah, I agree with you. But uh, the, the other thing is, you see, of course, the way we are today, most people don't know exactly the correct way that they move unless somebody says to them, now that's the way they should move. That's not the way they should move. You know, you have to try and teach these people, but I don't know how you do it. I don't. I, I honestly don't know how you do it. I don't know how you teach them anything because, as far as I'm concerned, they all know it's all anyway. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah, which I yeah. find I find a bit concerning. It's very concerning for the future of the breed. I am very mm. concerned for the future of the breed. Um, um, the way the way it's it's progressed. I don't think it's progressing in the right way. Um, no, because I don't think we've got any people left in the breed that are proper dog people, if you know what I mean. Yeah. That's going, um, to, move, that's going to move the breed forward. And we, we don't have the numbers, of course, as well, which no. makes it even worse. The, the, the numbers now are, are pitiful in some ways. In some places, it's it's... It's awful. And thinking, thinking about you know, when days gone by, the numbers that we used to have, they're not there anymore. No comparison. And also, I think sometimes now you're getting dogs that are getting, well, probably getting tickets, or but getting obviously getting placed that shouldn't even be in a showing. 
Well, right. I mean, in days gone by, I mean, we have uh, some that in days gone by would struggle to win a, a postgraduate class. Definitely. But, but, but it's what it's what we're left with. And, and I, I, I don't know. I don't know if we can ever rescue the breed, get back to where it was. Um, um, that does worry me because as we go back to saying, you know, we don't have the breeders. We don't have the the, the, the number of, of stud dogs with different um, Blood different lines. Yeah, yeah. It's because yeah. we don't we don't have the big kennels anymore, do we? No. But how, how, how do you see how do you see now we've got on this subject the future of dog shows in general? Well, um, I think I think because of of what's happening at this present moment in time. Um, I'm not sure quite how shows will be, whether they'll ever be the same again, because because people will will suddenly realise um, um, how much money they've got yeah. in their pocket, because you know you're, you're saving a lot of money on on entries, petrol, hotels. Yeah, I, bet, and, I bet your petrol bills. No. Oh, well, it's it's like you know I go to the. The, the petrol station once and I, I don't go for weeks and weeks because where am I going? I'm, I'm, I go to the supermarket and back and that's it. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, the, you know, and of course people have been losing their jobs as well. So I think, yeah, I think that's, I don't think we'll come in. I don't think we'll come out of this as well as we went into it at all. No, I don't. I really Inclu don't. Including dog shows and dogs and just life in general will not be the same for a long, long time. No, I don't think it will. No, and it, it's very worrying. Um, it, it's, it's worrying. It's worrying for the breed because in lots of breeds, people will come out probably, and then you're not going to be left with very much, I'm afraid. Um, and I just, I just think some breeds could well disappear. I'm not saying Lars as well, but some of the other breeds, the the, um, the smaller numbered breeds, some of the smaller numbered terriers, are struggling. They were struggling before this. Um, this could be the end of them, and, and that's that's very sad. Um, Same with I a mean, lot of show, a lot of shows as well. If the numbers fall fall dramatically, they'll lose money as well. And and whether they can financially carry on. I mean, I mean, I, the other day I was I was looking at um, down behind here. I've got all the cross catalogues, and I had I was looking up something. And you look at the entries, oh my goodness me, you know, you think, crikey. Um, and then you compare it to, to, to you know, now. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, it's just terrible. But, but then people, people find other things to do as well, of course. Um, that's not going to happen. They find a life. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they find other things to do. <laughs> what knitted? <laughs> I can't see you the foot with needles. <laughs> Is there anything else you want to talk about besides knitting? <laughs> no, thank you. I'll go on first. <laughs> you, you can stick to this in. <laughs> when you see you at dog shows, you've got your judge's face on. Here, Tom. And I've never really had anything to do with you social, socially. And well, you, yeah, you come over really, really well. You come over like Mr. Nice Guy. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a peculiar person as much as um, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a gushy person, really. I'm, I'm, I'm a bit reserved. And um, um, I just... I just gushy person i'm not awful and, and i and people say to me oh you're unapproachable and, and i kind of well i think oh, i'm a really and i think yes i probably am because i'm not i'm, I'm not gushy or, you know like some people are and i don't force myself on people um i think you'll come over they'll be going is that really jeff college it's <laughs> <laughs> not it's not that middle old man at dog show <laughs> <laughs> I am serious, you know, it's, it's, it's a fault. You can put that in, I don't care if you put that in, I don't care. I am serious, you know. Have um, you enjoyed it? Yeah, I've loved it, yeah. I was a bit, I was a bit, no, I wasn't sure what it was going to be like, but I really enjoyed it. Yeah, it's been everybody, really good. Everybody's the same. 
Well, thank you very much, Jeff, for having us today. It's been a real pleasure. Can you just explain to the viewers what's that that's tweaking in the background? One of my other passions is breeding finches. And these are Australian Gouldian finches, wonderfully coloured birds, but they don't like our climate. They don't like the cold. They have to be kept inside which it's warm. That's why they're up here in my office and keep me company. Sorry if they distract the viewers, but they keep me company. It have totally ruined me. <laughs> <laughs> It'll take more than a bird to ruin you, Terry. I'm trying. <laughs> it's been a pleasure, Jeff. Thank you very much, folks. Yeah, I really and enjoyed it. Thank, thank you. All right, cheers. Bye. Bye. Bye.